So if you're new to sports design, here are five things you should be doing in almost all of your sports graphics. Number one is using textures. So textures you can grab from online, you can go out and take your own photos of things. We just wanna stay away from like totally flat one color backgrounds. This texture I just dragged in titled Back of Sign is literally from me going out for a walk one day, taking a picture on my iPhone of the back of like a stop sign or some street sign. And I just kind of like the, the steel texture that it can give to a design. So I'm gonna mess with this blend mode, set it to soft light, and let's change our background color away from pure black. That's kind of another sub tip in here is don't use pure black really at all. Let's pick a slightly lighter gray so we have something for the texture to hit basically. And I'm just gonna desaturate this back of sign layer by going up to black and white. And now we have like a purely black and white design going on. This is more interesting than just a, a flat background. We'll keep our texture on. You can also use textures at the ends of designs in addition to using them in backgrounds for the text in your images, all sorts of things. Use textures. The next tip is to do something to every photo you drag in. So let's start with just dragging in our Phil Turner cutout, Toronto Rush, Block Extraordinaire. And at the very least with player cutouts, I would always go up to filter, camera raw filter, and just make some basic adjustments. Usually I'll brighten it a little bit, add some contrast, decrease the highlights, increase the shadows, play with the whites and blacks a little bit, and then always add texture and clarity. Not always, but it's typically a good idea to just add some of it because it does help bring that player cutout out a little bit more. And so you can see just the quick before and after with camera raw filter. Again, just do something to every cutout that enters in. You can mess with the coloring too. Maybe we wanted to like make this fully a black and white cutout and just leave the red highlighted. If we bring in a full color photo that maybe we want to use in the background, I would never just like leave this as is for the graphic. I would probably want to make this photo black and white so it feels like it fits in the background more. So again, you can play around with things. I like to use gradient maps to edit photos and we'll just set this to like a basic black and white gradient map. And maybe we'll even eyedropper this background color. So it's not like fully black, but pretty dark. And let's just take like a strip of this photo too. And like that, that's just with the rectangular marquee tool. And so again, I'm just doing something to it. I'm not just leaving it as like a full color photo in the background, sizing it down, picking out just the part that I want to display, and then bringing it over to the left side of the image in black and white. So maybe you have like additional photos in, we can just like create some, some fake uh, boxes where you can imagine more photos might go in a different design. Let's pick like some gray color for these. And we can just keep making a few shapes here just for the sake of whatever, whatever this design is going to turn into. There we go. A couple, couple gray boxes. We keep, keep with this black and white theme where we have the player cut out really popping out in the image. Another thing you could do with like background photos, especially is crop them off a little early and then cut out like just the player and have his arm kind of reaching out of the frame, that's an effect you can do. And you could also get into camera raw with these background photos, but we'll just leave it as is for now. Maybe we'll fade it a little bit more too. The next tip is to use grids, guides, and margins. If you hit command apostrophe on the keyboard, that'll bring up your guides. So at the very least, you should be paying attention to your margins. If you wanna set your margins, you can go to view, guides, and new guide layout. That way you can set your margins here. Like if we want one inch margins around all the edges, hit okay. And then command semicolon, we'll toggle this on and off. So let's just line up these, these blocks that we brought in to the margin. So we're leaving like two boxes on every edge. So I'm also gonna keep like two boxes between like the edge of the photo and the edge of this box. And then this one Again, just two boxes up from the bottom. And then maybe we bring this down a little bit so we get a little bit more contrast between the boxes 
and the photo. You don't have to be super precise, you don't have to line them up exactly every time, but it's generally a good idea just to use guides to keep your design a little bit cleaner. If you're ever running out of room, let's say we were filling this background space with photos too, and you were just feeling a bit overwhelmed by your design, you can always just highlight all of the non-background layers, hit Command T, and just size it down to create more space, like if we just need more room for text over here, whatever it may be, but we're just gonna keep it as is for now. I feel like we have plenty of room. Let's also add a text layer. So I'm just gonna type out Turner, his last name, and we'll use a skinny font, Dharma Gothic, to just drop this over like the top of these images and blocks. And again, just with our grids pulled up, I'm gonna align this to like two from the top of the player photo, one from the edge of the photo, and then we'll go two from the bottom of the player photo too. Two boxes, that is. And we'll set this to stroke. So we just have like the outside of the text showing through. And it, it gives us a little bit more of a red theme instead of just purely black and white in this graphic. So speaking of colors, the next tip is to pay attention to color and lighting. These reds actually don't match the red on this text and the red on his jersey. If I increase the fill all the way and show you, this is what it looks like. So you'll see the, the jersey is just a slightly different shade. It's a good idea to just try to keep, especially like a featured color like this red, try to keep it consistent with the text with the photos you're using. So I'm just gonna add a hue and saturation layer and clip this to the fill turner cutout, holding option and hovering in the space between these layers. And then going to reds, you can desaturate this a little bit so it feels like it matches the turner a bit more. And we'll maybe play with the shade of red too. And it doesn't have to be exact, but just like enough where it doesn't look so off. So I like that, but let's switch our text back to the stroke effect. And then lighting is also super important. So we'll see the texture we brought in kind of brings this light in from the top right corner of the image. It looks like our cutout is a little bit more lit from this side, from the left side. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this texture that we're using over everything right now. Going up to edit, transform, flip horizontal. That's gonna keep the light in the top left corner and it just feels a little bit more natural for this design and this player cutout. You can also add more lighting tweaks to the cutout itself by going to your adjustment layers, adding a curves layer, and then I always set it to luminosity so it's just affecting the light and the dark. And then if you bring this curves layer down, you can see this darkens him, and then with an inverted mask, we can brush on some darkness on just this side of him. So again, it's just enhancing this effect that the light is coming from the top left corner. So quick before and after there. Another thing to note with color is if you have multiple player cutouts, it's really important that you try to get those colors matching as much as possible. So if we brought in another Phil Turner cutout and this red looked more orange or more pink, it's a really good idea and just good practice to keep those reds matching as closely as possible. So in addition to hue and saturation, you can use something like selective color that can make subtle tweaks to the reds or any other color specifically in the image. Let's just round out our design a little bit more by adding Phil Turner's full name, Phil Turner, and switching the font to Termina Black, sizing it up, and then we'll give him like a fake signature just to fill this space over here to not fill already signature, and then we'll switch this off of caps, fill turner, and just so we have some sort of finished design to work with for this next step, which is to experiment with different effects at the very end of your design. So mess around with different textures, you can mess around with the colors too. What I like to do at the very least is make a new layer and then holding command option shift E, that's gonna paste everything, basically flattens the image of like what you're looking at right now to its own layer. So if we turn smart filters on for this, and then again, go back into camera raw, we can adjust things like the exposure, if we wanna brighten up the image, the contrast, and these are just like master effects we're doing 
to the whole image. Maybe we bring the highlights a bit down. And again, a little bit more texture and clarity just for fun. And then we'll, we'll also add in some, uh, some effects down here, some vignetting on the edges just to bring the focus towards the middle of the design. So that's one thing you can do at the end. You can also play with color lookups if you want to mess with some of these. Candlelight cube is an interesting one, kind of gives it this washed over look, a little yellow, orange warming look too. Crisp warm is another one. So play around with these different things. You can play with the opacity on any of these effects as well until you're happy with how the design turns out. You can also add more textures over the top of the design. I have this plastic texture. I think I took this just on a slide at a playground and the sun was reflecting off it in a cool way. But we'll set this to like, not luminosity. Let's just go with like hard light. And again, we'll desaturate this with a black and white adjustment. And then, you know, you have this like a bit more exaggerated lighting effect, again, coming in from the top left. So we like to be consistent with that as well. I also tend to put a layer of grain over everything. So if we make a new layer and select all of the screen by going Command A. Now, if you go to your selection tool and right click in here, you can fill this and we're gonna fill it with 50% gray. Then we're gonna go up to filter, noise, add noise, and usually like seven to 10% in a 1080 by 1080 graphic is pretty good for me. So we'll go like, we'll go 10%, maybe we can see the effect a little bit better. And then we'll switch the blend mode to soft light. You can start to see some of the added detail when you turn it on and off. If you want it more exaggerated, you could go to hard light and maybe we bring that down the opacity from there. 30% is about good. So just to see the finishing effects before and after, we can select all these holding shift and clicking on our layers, group them together, and you can see what the effects did to the end of the design. So those are probably the five most important tips I could give you right now. Again, using textures, doing something to every photo you bring in, using your grids, your guides, your margins, paying attention to color and lighting in any image, and then finally, putting finishing touches on any design. Playing with those filters and adjustment layers at the end, you can really create some cool stuff.